بسم الله وعلى بركة الله محاضرة لهذا اليوم محاضرة لهذا اليوم هي Temporal Joint هذه المحاضرة والمحاضرة القادمة إن شاء الله we try as much as we could in order to cover all the expect of the Temporal Mandible Joint but as a general talking it will be very difficult to cover all the expect of the Temporal Mandible Joint بصراحة سوف لن نستطيع تغطية all the aspect of the temporomandible joint this lecture and the second lecture because it is considered to be as a huge amount of information to this joint this joint which is considered to be a very complex joint and very complex movement and this type of this system of the TMJ which is considered to be as a part of the neuromuscular system which is consists of teeth and soft tissue, muscles and tendon and so on as we are going to see in this lecture which will play a great role in the breathing, eating, speech therefore any dysfunction of the temporomandible joint may cause a severe pain and may change in the lifestyle so at the beginning, try to concentrate with me. Try to understand the basic principles of the temporomandible joint. And try to be familiar with the most important structures which is going to be representing the anatomical of the temporomandible joint. And this may include the muscle, as we are going to say, the tendon, in addition, further information, there are many types of questions which is going to be arise when I'm going to deal with this subject. First of all, why we study this subject? As a general talking, we are going to study this subject. As I mentioned before, more than 50% of the patients who are attending to the oral medicine, they are complaining of wrong temporomandible joint so knowing the diagnosis then knowing the etiological factors which is going to be contributing in the development of the temporomandible joint and knowing <clears throat> the treatment plan is very important again here is a question which is very important before we are going to study what is the important aspect the important aspect of this subject is the way that we are going to make an accurate diagnosis to this type of joint. As we are going to see, there are a different way in order to make a diagnosis. And sometimes these types of this method is going to be changed within time. So knowing the diagnosis, whether the male problem is related to the muscles, or the problem may related to the bone, this joint is very important. Another question, how we are going to study this subject? We are going to study this subject as a follow. First of all, we are going to concentrate on the anatomical aspect because knowing the anatomy is very important. Then we are going to have information regarding the diagnosis and the different modalities of a treatment. The aspect that we are Concerning about, as I mentioned before, anatomy, diagnosis, different disorder, in addition to the treatment. And we are going to investigating the different systemic diseases, which is going to be influence of the TMJ. And also the clinical feature, whether there is a pain limitation and deviation. And finally, how we are going to make a diagnosis according to the different criteria which is used in the diagnosis whether disc displacement with reduction without reduction as we are going to see in the different modalities of a treatment starting from medication the better plane muscle exercise when we are going to send the patient for surgery these are the more main important aspects that we are going to deal with in this lecture. Please try to concentrating to me, concentrating with me in order to understand the importance of the temporomandible joint. 
the beginning let me have idea about these types of joint Inframandible joint are two joints connected at the jaw bone the skull is a bilateral synovial articulation between the temporal bone of the skull this area the mandible below the right and the left joint must function together and therefore are not independent on each other so it is that joint which is going to be connected the mandible within the temporal bone of the skull هذه هي الخاصية الرئيسية في هذا الموضوع أن هناك اتصال بين المانديبل وبين the temporal bone of the skull the temporal mandible joint so how this joint is going to be function how the joint is going to be have a diseases or it is going to be reflect a systemic disease that's what we are going to discuss in this subject and the another subject Temporal mandible joint are one of the few synovial joints in the human body. The most important things that we call it the articulating disc. This what we call it the articulating disc. This articulating disc is going to be divided into the synovial, the synovial cavity into the superior complement. This is the area and between the inferior complement. Then Honaka articulating disc. The articulating disc is fibra cartilaginous tissue. When the yachtelf min kul disc at the mojuda be joint inside the body, this act as a cushion to prevent the bone to the bone contact. This is the area of the bone of the mandible. And this is the area. So any erosions of this type of disc of this type of disc may let to develop the problem. The compartments are synovial cavities. the upper the lower. Consist of upper and lower synovial cavity. The synovial membrane lining the jaw will produce the synovial fluid. The synovial fluid is going to be fills this cavity. The lower, the upper. The articulating disc prevent the bone to bone contact another important anatomical structure which is going to be representing that's what we call the capsule the temporal muscle this is the buccinator muscles this is masseter muscles and here we could demonstrating the tmj capsule which is considered to be as a dense fibrous membrane surrounding the joint and incubate the articulating eminence it is attached to other articulating eminence the articulating disc in the neck of the mandible condyle look this is the neck of the mandible condyle the articulating disc at the neck of the mandible condyle it's what we call it the temporal mandible joint capsule Let me have more idea regarding the articulating disc, which is considered to be as a fibra cartilaginous tissue, which is considered to be as an extension of the capsule in between the two bones of the disc. The disc function, the whole disc, articulating surface against both the temporal bone, as we are going to see in this area, and the condyle and divided the joint into two sections the disc is component of fibra cartilaginous tissue that is located between the head of the condyle the mandible condyle and the glenoid fossa of the temporal bone this is the temporal bone this is the glenoid fossa and this is the head of the condyle and between them the articulating disc which is a prevent the bone to bone action or bone to bone erosion so it is going to be act like 
كوشن فهذا هو الفانكشن الرئيسي اللي هو بالنسبة للارتكوليتين ديسك Other information of this amazing disk. لاحظ. The interior portion of this types of disk split into vertical dimension, and it is going to be contact with the lateral tegod muscle with the superior head of the lateral tegod muscle. This is the lateral tegod muscle. This is the interior part of the disk. While the posterior part or posterior portion of the disk split into vertical dimension, the area between the split continuous periphery. Continuous posteriorly and is going to be attached to the red discal tissue. Again, I'm going to how or to clarify this point. This is the interior part of the articulating disc, which is going to be attached within the <coughs> lateral tegod muscle or within the superior head of the lateral tegod muscle. The posterior part is going to be attached within the red discal tissue. Posterior attachment of the articulation. So, another important anatomical structure that we are going to concern about is the ligament. And the major ligament is the temporomandible ligament, linking laterally portion of the capsule. It has two parts the outer oblique portion and the inner horizontal portion. The base of the triangular ligament is attached to the zygoma, process of the temporal bone, and to the articulating tubercle. The whole joint capsule, the lateral ligament, <coughs> other capsule, the whole lateral ligament, the sphenomandible ligament, the sphenoid bone, and the sphenoid bone. Another ligament that we are concerning about, what we call it is stylo, which is going to be representative from stylo, the mandible ligament. Again, <clears throat> the major ligament is the temporal mandible ligament, the joint capsule, the stylo mandible, or joint capsule, sphenomandible mandible. All of the types of mandible. What is its function? Look exactly, this is a capsule. Sphenomandible. Stylomandible. It is function to fix the lateral side of the neck of the mandible. This ligament or this ligament to prevent the excess of retraction or excess of background of the mandible. And Because of these types of movement may lead to the problem. لاحظ هناك قوة عن طريق الستايلو مانتبل لقمنت وأيضا السفينو مانتبل لقمنت تمنع الباكورد بوزيشن of the مانتبل حافظ على بقاء المانتبل in its position this capsule first of all if we want to understand problem that may associate it with the temporomandible joint we have to understand the types of movement so simply and the types of movement of mandible it is very complex but if we want to simply investigating these types of movement it is usually consists of two type rotational or hinge movement which is usually occur within opening of the mouth from 20 to 20 millim Other types of movement, what we call the transitional types of movement. Movement after when the mouth is excessively opened, more than 20 to 25 millim. So, what is the rotational types of movement? Rotational types of movement, it is the initial movement of the jaw. When the mouth opens, the upper Or complement found by articulating disc with temporal bone method metcalamina, it is involved in a translation movement. This is the secondary blinding motion of the jaw as it is opening widely. 
the part of the mandible which made the upper side or surface of the disc is the condyle in this area the part of the temporal bone made the upper surface of the disc is the articulating fossa or the glenoid fossa of the mandible fossa then نرجع بصورة طبيعية نقول هناك articulating disc يقوم بفصل بين غير الكوندايل وبين هناك الكلينويد فوسا and the types of movement is going to be divided into rotational and the transitional types of movement of the mandible as simply as we could We want to investigating the different etological factors of the temporal mandible joint disorder. As a general talking, the causes of temporal mandible disorder are very complex, multifactorial. There are many factors can be contributing to the development of the disorder. As a general talking, there is no single cause of temporal mandible disorder. There are multiple factors. Sometimes <clears throat> we could divide it into initial factors and the predeposing factors. The factors, what we mean by the predeposing factors, factors that increase the risk of the temporal mandible disorder, these causing the onset of the temporal mandible joint disorder initiating factor. Then Hunaka Awamil to Saad here predeposing factors in order to initiating the temporal mandible disorder. These initiate and the factors that interfere with healing or enhance the progress of the temporal mandible disorder are called rotating factors. Then three most important predeposing, initiating, repudiating factors. And these factors may enhance the progress of the temporal mandible disorder. Then هناك عوامل مساعدة تساعد العوامل الرئيسية وهناك عوامل تأثر على البروغنوزيز مال الديسوردر نفسه. Then قبل ما يصير initiating factors هناك predeposing factors. وهناك بعد ال initiating mal factors هناك عوامل تساعد ال progressive of the temporal mandible disorder which is called rotating factors. هم هذه ال factors هي ال proxisms the orthopedic instability the micro trauma or the micro trauma other factor like for example the poor health nutrition Joint laxity, exogenesis estrogen, as we are going to see. That this problem is mostly a care in a female than male. The psychological factors, which is considered to be as the initiating factors. Gain the occlusion. Now there is a many controversial idea regarding the occlusion. الاكلوجن بالتمبرو مندبل جوينت وعن تل ناو علاقة الاكلوجن is considered to be as a complex and تل ناو it is considered as a controversial idea whether the occlusion is going to be cause the temporal mandible disorder whether it is going to be initiating redeposing europeating Factors of the temporal mandible disorder till now it is a controversial. The initiating factor led to the onset of the symptoms. They are related primarily to the trauma or adverse leading of the masticatory system. يدعى Neuromuscular System What we call the Masticatory System هذا يتألف من بون ويتألف من muscles ويتأثر أيضا بليجمنت 
profile propriating factors may include the behavioral factors the behavior that can be grinding clinching social factors may play a great role to affect the perceptions of influence of the learned response to the pain while the emotion factors which is considered to be as a serious condition which is going to be affected the depression and the anxiety again not all patients need a psychological evaluation and management however but them here the dentistry cannot provide while the concern is that the psychological complement of the depilating condition is too frequently overlooked or ignored perhaps ignore the psychological complement is what leads to the frustration and difficulty in management of the temporal multiple joint what i want to say from this statement that carefully assessment the psychological status of the patient before we are going to go deep regarding the, the diagnosis of the patient is important because many of the psychological disorder like for example the depression the anxiety it is going to be manifesting itself by different modalities of behavior for the patient those types of patient who's complaining from the psychological complement may complain from grinding clinching and as a result it's going to be affected the neuromuscular system as a general talking which is going to be reflect itself on the temporal multiple joint therefore is try not to ignore the psychological evaluation of the patient actually the management of the psychology is not primarily related to the dentist we have to say in the patient for psychological assessment also predisposing factors are pathophysiology psychological structural process and as a result is going to be out of the masticatory system and lead to the development of the temporal multiple joint nerve occlusion what are the occlusions which is going to be affected open bite in oval jet more than 6 to 7 million and recruited the contact position intercaspal position unilateral lingual cross bite missing of the teeth and specify here we have to concentrate on the posterior types of teeth there will no equal distribution of the force of mastication and as a result this force is going to be transmitted through the neuromuscular system the muscles of mastication and is going to be reflect its effect on the temporal multiple joint again the falling or the ill-fitted denture may affect so any heterogenic injuries can act both initiating and predeposing factors any dental procedures like for example the orthodental orthodontic treatment sometimes root canal treatment which is going to be present for a long period of time that the patient opening his mouth may lead to the functional implants between the temporal mandible and the muscles and the occlusion which may lead to development of the clinical symptom there is no single etiological factors no single predisposing factors which is going to be initiating the development of the temporal mandible disorder sometimes the occlusion it could be initiating as we are going to see over bite over jet missing of the posterior teeth and the most important things here there will be no equal distribution of the force of mastication the prosthetic may influence the temporal multiple joint again sometimes the orthodontic treatment even though if the patient is sitting for a long period of time opening his mouth sometimes he is attending to our dental clean opening from temporal multiple joint disorder again investigating the systemic disease is important in order to evaluating the patient 
And these are the most common causes of the systemic disease, which is going to be influence the temporomandible joint. Infection, arthritis, rheumatic arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and sometimes secondary degenerative arthritis can affect the temporomandible joint also. Then, what I'm going to say, there is a no one cause of the temporomandible joints, and there are the multifactorials. Some of these may relate to the local effect, some may relate to the systemic, and some may relate to the psychological. Whether it was a local or whether it was a systemic, which is going to be influenced the temporomandible joint, as a general talking, this is going to be reflect its effect on the neuromuscular system is going to be a reflect itself on this joint and as a result the sign of symptoms is going to be initiating early assessment of these types of patient is very important as i say هذه النقطه الرئيسيه ان هذه الاوجاع مال المفصل اذا نحكي بالناحيه العاميه is sometimes confusing with other types of pain it is going to be confusing with a typical facial pain Confusing with with the vascular types of pain, like we're, as we are going to see, or with the neurological types of pain, or sometimes confusing is usually a care in addition. Sometimes one types of pain may lead to another. Therefore, carefully assessment of the etiological factors that I have been shown is very important in order to understand the etiology. Whatever we are going to know, the exact factors which is may lead to the temporomandible joint, we could describe a perfect way of dental treatment. So, how the pain is going to be started, and what are the signs or symptoms? In tenderness of the jaw, in in one of the both of the temporomandible joint. What I'm going to clarify here is the pain. Sometimes it is going to be referred in the temporomandible joint, or sometimes there will be a referred type of pain, which is going to be reflected in its effect on the other muscles. So, or sometimes these types of pain may extend to another area, extend to the neck. <clears throat> extend to the muscle of mastication. The most important things sometimes the pain may occur during the functional types of movement, during opening and closing, or during protruded, or protruded. Again, pain may be around the air. The patient may complain from difficulty in the chewing. Or pain some or difficulty in chewing or pain during chewing. Pushing pain may represent times the patient attending to your complaining of wrong locking of the joint, make it very difficult to open or close the joint. Then ham sign symptoms, symptoms in the who will pain. The maginal pain, it can be jaw, and sometimes it's going to be referred. And sometimes it's going to associate it with itching, difficulty in chewing, and sometimes the pain may be referred into another area. Another thing that we have been noticed during examination is the trismus, what we call the log jaw. Here the patient cannot be opening with a normal condition, and there will be reduced in the opening of the jaw. Associated with the limited in the range of motion, protruded, protruded, and the lateral types of movement is going to be affected also. These types of movement is going to be responsible by the muscle of mastication. Therefore, spasm of the muscle of mastication may occur. Sometimes this stress is going to be occur temporarily, and the patient will be open after that. Or sometimes there will be a permanent treatment.
that is going to be interfere with eating, speaking, and as a result, the oral hygiene is going to be affected. The patient here cannot be swallowing properly. Now, one of the problems is may lead to another. There was a consequence of a series of problems may associated with these types of joint. So how, what are the factors which is going to be for clinical significance that has helped me to the diagnosis. The differentiation of the pain or genetic within the joint from that coming from the extra articulated structures is essential to successful treatment. However, it is very difficult for the dentist to distinction for those types of pain. And both the intra and the extra articulated structures may be involved. To be more clarified, for example, the patient with intra articular articulated TMJ pain due to the arthritis has the pain revealed by the jaw rest yani even the patient cannot be moved his yani, uh, do not try to move his joint pain is going to be represent and may be pain free except when the moving the mandible or masticatory solid food unfortunately the interarticulating temporal mandible joint disease often involve the masticatory muscles Secondary to that types of pain, so that both types of intra and extra, intra and extra, are experienced simultaneously by the patient. Then, the hernia pain may occur due to the intra-articulator temporomandible joint. Sometimes the pain may occur due to the functional movement, and sometimes the patient may not. Uh, sometimes the pain not occur due to the functional movement, and even after rest, the pain is going to be represented, or sometimes the pain is going to be represented when the patient is going to be must have a mastication only, so during the types of movement only. Sometimes we could demonstrate the noise. During functional, it is highly suggestive of intra-articulating disease. Grinding. Repetas often indicating that there is arthrogenic changes or there will be degenerative process. And this degenerative process may occur due to the contact of the rough bony surface. As we are going, as we have been seen before, when the articulating disc may have erosion, what's going to be happened? This surface is going to be what <clears throat> this uh, the, this bony surface is going to be have a degenerating process due to the use of action of the articulating disc, which is usually act as a cushion like. Other joints, what we call it, the clicking or popping in the joint, is usually associated with the displacement of fibrocartilage. Sometimes this meniscus or this articulating disc is not going to be represented in its position it is not act as a cushion between the bone to bone attachment <clears throat> between the upper and the lower component these important factors these sore which is going to be produced during the movement of the joint should be carefully examined at assessment by the by the dentist in order to understand the condition Popping without pain is not typically a cause of concern. Therefore, the mere present what I'm going to clarify here. Mujarrat would you the salt. It's not an opening and closing. We could not consider that this patient is a temporomandible joint disorder. Sometimes jaw popping without pain is not typically a cause of concern.
jaw because of the jaw popping is not completely understandable now the jaw popping can affect the treated at home especially if there is no pain no any other symptoms like for example deviation no limitation in the uh, lim limitation in the mouth opening and anyone of any age or any sex can experience jaw popping, which may lead to linked to the behavior. Hand behavior that may lead to the popping, grinding, chewing gum regularly, biting of the nail, clinching of the jaw, biting the inside of the cheek or the lip. This behavior may lead to jaw popping. Other noise that is not should may what I'm going to send a message to you during examination, the mere presence of the clicking does not indicate that the patient is multiple joint disorder or this types of patient need treatment. <clears throat> Several medical conditions can lead to the jaw popping. This include Limitation of the multiple opening may be due to the reflex spasm of the mystery as the myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome. The myofascial pain. Lahav. Coexisted between the temporal multiple joint and between the myofascial pain. Confusing sometimes as may occur between the myofascial pain and the temporal multiple joint. Because temporal multiple joint may lead to myofascial pain. And controversially is correcting also. The myofascial pain may lead to the temporal multiple joint. The reason that we are concerning about fibrous bony ankylosis, or even if the patient have previously exposed to any source of a trauma, which may lead to fracture of the multiple condyle, or total internal displacement of the joint meniscus, that block normal forward movement of the multiple then, here a medical condition which may lead to this sound, a myofascial pain, traumatic, ankylosis, and a displacement of the disc or the meniscus. A physical examination for the temporal multiple joint disorder. Here, measurement, recording of the multiple movement should be completed for opening and lateral with the protrusive types of movement. Again, <coughs> the quality, the symmetry of the dual movement should be noted and <coughs> and should be recorded well and diagrammed also. Another disorder that we could notice Hypermobility result from excessive interior movement of the jaw, the articulating disc. This will be result in deviation of the jaw away from the affected side. Sometimes we could demonstrating some clinical sound in the temporal multiple joint, and sometimes marfan down cerebral palsy may affect it. That also. The patient is complaining from long term hypermobility. This may affect the meniscus or the articulating disc, which became elongated and degenerated. And here the disc can fail to reduce on closing, causing the temporal joint to become more stuck in its open position. Closed lock or open lock. This can often occur after opening of the mouth to extreme position, such as when thinking, yawning, or after prolonged dental procedure, as I mentioned, for example, in a patient with root canal types of treatment. Those types of patients may attend to us making clinical form dental problem. So how we could make a diagnosis for the temporal multiple joint? It is very difficult to make the exact diagnosis of the temporal multiple joint. 
because there are many factors which is going to be initiating and participating this condition and sometimes there is different types of a criteria which is used for the diagnosis Sometimes they, we are going to use the research diagnostic criteria and how the research diagnostic criteria is going to be changed within time, changed within the research the criteria to start them. We can group, group of the temporal multiple disorder sometimes considered to be a needed treatment. The daily criteria or so will examination monitor. They are not considered to be as a patient who need actual types of a treatment. يعني هذا موضوع شائك ايضا مثلا المانيوال فانكشنال اناليسيس وغيره هذا مو من ضمن مسؤوليتكم هذا يعطى الى طلبه الدراسات العليا المبدا الرئيسي انه نحتاج هناك الى هيستوري ونحتاج هناك الى فيزيكال اكزامينشن Sometimes the symptoms of the temporal multiple joint during examination occur during the types of movement during opening during closing during lateral types of movement the pain may occur in the mass eater's muscles. Again, another source of orofacial pain, like for example, the typical facial pain, or vascular types, or neurological, whatever, sometimes it's confusing with the temporal multiple joint. And even though the present of a kicking, Hoping, waiting, crepitus, dizziness. Sometimes the pain is going to be extended middle magna to another area in neck, in eye, in arm. All of it is going to be affected the diagnosis of the temporal multiple joint. Then Honake, chronic A1 temporal multiple joint, which is going to be defined by the pain more than three months in duration. What I'm going to focus regarding the diagnosis, the Arida Wadahab Surah Amma, when I get different types of modalities of treatment, different modalities of the diagnosis, whether this diagnosis is going to be dependent on the research diagnostic criteria or the, on the manual functional analysis. And the most important things in order to gain a diagnosis. Taking a history, physical examination to see if there is any pain. Some the maginal pain is going to be represented in the temporal multiple, or sometimes it is going to be referred to the different area. Again, to look at the diagnosis to see if there is any limitation, any deviation, any asymmetry of the face, or even though popping, repetas, or extension, or dizziness of the neck. A dizziness or neck involvement, eye involvement, as I have mentioned. The clicking or crepitus, I have a wadah or locking, sometimes may accompany by joint dysfunction. And this is may represent the anterior disc displacement or disc displacement. While second clicking during examination, during the closure of the mouth, may give us indication about the recapture of the displaced disc. That's what we call it, the disc displacement with reduction. <clears throat> the disc displacement, sometimes it is going to be progress. The patient is able to fully open his mouth. That is to say, the disc is a blocked translation of the condyle. This condition is referred to the closed lock. <clears throat> Other things that we are going to notice during examination is the crepitus. This may relate it to the articulating surface disruption which often occur in patients with osteoarthritis. Here, during examination, more than one side could be demonstrating. More than one sound could be heard. Repetus, itani, akthar, akthaka, or akthar, more than one clicking could be demonstrating. And mostly occur in a patient with a degenerative 
changes in the patient mostly associated with osteoarthritis. While reproductible tenderness palpation of the TMJ is suggestive of intra-articulating the arrangement. Here the patient may have a tenderness of mansitor, temporalis, surrounding neck muscles, which is actually difficult to differentiate from malaysia or as I said before, myofascial trigger point or referred to the syndrome. Another thing that we have noticed during examination, in addition to the crepitus, deviation toward the affected side during the mouth opening may indicate also the disc is going to be displaced from its position. And mostly interior articulating disc displacement. Then an internal derangement mallet joint, which is considered the most conform of internal derangement, who will interior misalignment or displacement of articulating disc above the condyle. ماذا يعني هذا؟ الحالة الطبيعية الارتكوليتنج ديسك يقع بين الهيد اوف ذا كوندايل وبين الانفيريال سيرفيس اوف ذا وبين الجلينوت فوسا يمنع الاحتكاك واكت لاك كوشن عندما يتغير موقع الديسك ولا يؤدي واجبه ككوشن بين ذا هيد اوف ذا كوندايل اند بين ذا جلينوت فوسا ذير ويل بي بون تو بون اتاتشمنت اند ذا problem is going to be initiating of the temporal mandible joint. Symptoms are localized pain, hoping on the jaw movement. And here the diagnosis is based on the history and the physical examination. Therefore, early treatment is important. Sometimes these are problems or abnormal jaw mechanics may be due to the congenital or acquired symmetry or to the sequence of the trauma or arthritis. If the disc is remain internal, the arrangement is said without reduction. And here there will be restricted in the jaw opening, lobe jaw in in the air and around the temporal mandible joint if at some point of the joint exertion the disc retained to the head of the condyle the derangement is say with a with reduction هذا الموضوع ارجو انه تنتبه وياي بالحاله الطبيعيه وبالحاله الاعتياديه الارتكوليتنج ديسك يبقى بالبوزيشن مالته بين الهيد مال الكوندايل وبين الجلينا فوسا ويمنع الاحتكاك الذي يحدث في حالة البرون. If the articulated disc is going to be moved in its position, whether it's going to be moved in internal disc displacement or internal ممكن يكون mid أو 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 الحالة الأخرى posterior disc displacement يعني ال posterior disc يرقى إلى الخلف. إذا if the articulating disc is going to be retained to its position. هذا يدعى بالinternal disc displacement with reduction. That disc does not retain to its position and does not act as a cushion between the two surfaces of the bone. Here the degenerative changes inside the bone is going to be initiating وفي مثل هكذا لا يدعى disc displacement without reduction. نمود نفهم هذا الموضوع بصورة دقيقة نرجع إلى موضوع The Articulating Disc اللي تكلمنا عليه أثناء شرحنا لموضوع The Anatomical Structure of the TMJ وأحب أوضح وأحب أعيد إنه هذا The Articulating Disc واللي يعتبر Fibrocartagenous Type of Tissue لعب دورا كبيرا the presence of any sign or symptoms in the presence of any temporal mandible joint disorder. Nerja ila the basic principles, nerja ila the functional raisi of the articulating disc, the articulating disc which is considered to be as a fibrous, 
and extension of the capsule that's run between the two articulating surface. In the Ladea, two articulating surface of the temporal mandible joint. This disc is going to be articulate with the mandible fossa of the temporal bone above the condyle of the mandible block. Then, مثل ما قلنا سوف يلعب على شكل دور كبير كلش بالinternal arrangement of the temporal mandible joint. لاحظ تأثير وموقع الديسك على الـ الـ Temporal Mandible Disorder The Disc Displacement with Reduction هذه الحالة الأولى والتي نتكلم عليها هنا وتكون بصورة مبسطة The Articulating Disc has displaced anterior to the condyle head It may also be displaced medial or lateral Then كرر مرة أخرى على مود فهم الـ Basic Principles of the Internal Dearrangement هناك Articulating Disc حول إلى الأمام has displaced anterior to the condyle head it may displace هذه الـ anterior قد تكون medial وقد تكون باتجاه الـ lateral أما الـ posterior most border of the disc is anterior to بالضبط مثل ما نقول ساعة 11 نص position of the condyle head that here the disc remain in this position as long as the mouth is closed. When the mouth is open, the disc is resaturated, resaturated on the condyle head. And also the movement of the disc onto and off the condyle head may result in clicking. Then here we could describe the exact cause of the clicking of the temporal mandible joint. And the clicking is merely related to the movement on the disc into and off of the condyle head. And this also may result in snapping or popping sound. This sound does not occur with every mandible movement. Rather, it should be heard by the patient at least once in the last 30 days and by the examined dentist during at least a third of the mandible movement. Then, عندما يتغير موقع الديسك هذه types of movement اللي هي the clicking, snapping, or popping sound as we are going to see. Then, في الحالة الأولى أكرر هناك disc displacement هناك تحول في موقع الديسك ولكن هذا الديسك سوف يرجع إلى وضعه الطبيعي. And this cone is going to be called as disc displacement with reduction. Here we could see that the clicking, snapping, or because the disc reduces during condyle translation, range of movement is not limited. Here, the patient may have a normal opening of the mouth. That is to say, he do not have any limitation. Movement may not be smooth as normal temporal mandible joint because of the momentary sliding of the condyle and off and on and off of the disc. And sometimes, what I mean by on or off, sometimes the disc is going to be remain in its position, and sometimes it's going to be removed from its position. Another condition that we have to be in focus during the examination of the temporal mandible joint, and also it is related to this disc, which is fibrocartilaginous tissue. Here, the disc displacement with reduction with intermediate locking. This condition is identical to disc displacement with, re with reduction. With an additional feature of intermediate limited mandible opening on the occasion that the disc does not reduce. Then, articulating disc, it is going to be removed from its position, but it is going to be retained in its position. ولكن يرجع إلى وضع الطبيعي. The الحالة الثانية اللي هي disc displacement with reduction with intermittent looking في مثل هذا هكذا حالة sometimes the disc does not reduce or does not return to its position in order to act as a cushion between the articulating bone. Then نفس sign was simply تحدث with disc displacement with reduction. The same is going to be representing with disc displacement with reduction with intermediate locking. Lacking hunal clinical symptoms, rahtis dad, bin nisbali hadal marif.
as we are going to see those types of patient complaining from limited in the mandible opening then it's a little more more okra trahis bah displacement without reduction Hunashkan with reduction here without reduction this means that the articulating this does not return to its position after it's going to be removed and with also here we could demonstrating a limited type of movement that is mahuri terja al hal al ula disc displacement with reduction len yasbah hunaka a limitation in the mouth movement or in the mouth opening but with reduction with intermediate looking huna there will be a limited in the mandible open so let's see exactly what's going to be happen in this case this displacement without reduction with a limited opening diagnosis here is giving when the articulating disc does not reduce in its position and does not return to its position to act as a cushion between the articulating bone here the patient may complaining from limitation in the mouth opening and any limitation in the mouth opening is going to be defined when it is less than 35 to 40 millim between the maxilla and the mandible incisor uh, uh, incisal age with opening assisted by the dentist the maximum distant opening range must have actuated in a vertical incisal overlap at the maximum interspatial position here there will be a limitation in the mouth opening okay also there will be a disc displacement with reduction with intermediate looking also there will be limiting limitation in the mouth opening لاحظ الكلينيكال سيمبتومز كيف تختلف بالحاله الاولى اللي ذكرناها disc displacement with reduction the disc displacement reduction اكيد واكرر مره اخرى here there you could not demonstrating any pain you could not demonstrating any limitation you could not dismiss any deviation just you are going to hear a sound of a clicking or moving more advanced in this case in disc displacement with reduction with intermediate looking here you could demonstrating a pain you could demonstrating a limitation but here disc displacement without reduction what I mean exactly that the articulating this does not return to its position. And here, the patient may complaining from limited in opening. When limited, it could occur more than 40 mm or sometimes 35 mm between the maxillary and the mandible incisor incisal edge. Our maximum assistant opening range must have a factor rated in a vertical incisal overlap at the maximum intercuspid position. In more advanced, there will be displacement of the disc, there will be without reduction and without any limited opening. This condition is identical to the previous condition that I have mentioned before, with the exception. So just concentrate on this. The mandible do not have any limitation in the mouth opening. However, such limitation may have occurred in the past to the extent that eating was hindered. This condition typically follows the previous condition. Another condition of the internal derangement, what we call it posterior disc displacement. This is considered to be as a very rare a patient with internal derangement of the temporomandible joint. Pain is a present more often when the disc is perforated. في مثل هكذا حالة disc is not going to be have internal displacement. So if لن يتحرك الدسك إلى الأمام بمثل الحالة الأولى والثانية والثالثة أو الحالات اللي تتم شرحة وإنما الدسك سوف يرجع للوراء. And here we could demonstrating a joint sound occur more often in this thin disc type. With a clinical, with a clicking, is approximately half of the cases. Sometimes open lock and TMJ luxation, which occur roughly in the TMJ.
لاحظ اختلاف الكلينيكال سيمبتومز عندما يتحرك الديسك الى الامام ولاحظ اختلاف الكلينيكال سيمبتومز عندما يتحرك الديسك الى الخلف which is considered to be as a very rare in a posterior disc displacement if the pain is present more and especially if the disc is going to be perforated here we could demonstrate it more sound occur more often in the thin disc type with a clicking approximately half of the cases or half of those top patients or those types of patients and لموضوع مهم كلش اللي هو الاوستيو ارثرايتس اوف ذا تيمبرا مانديبل جوينت وفي كثير من الدراسات يرمز الى او اي الحقيقه اذا ناخذ مقدمه على هذا الموضوع الاوستيو ارثرايتس اوف ذا تيمبرا مانديبل جوينت يوجوالي ات از كونسيدر تو بي از ا يونالاترال ات از موستلي اسوشيتد وذ ذا ديجنريتيف ديزيزز اوف ذا جو جوينت And it's characterized by a breakdown of the articulate cartilage and all the agriculture is going to be changed as we are going to see here the patient may have a more sign on symptoms more radiographical changes as we are going to see in the next slide and osteoarthritis can be a form of arthritis characterized by the degenerative of the virus hard and soft tissue around the joint And we could demonstrating that the anatomical changes inside the joint and the patient here attending to us may complaining from pain. This pain may occur due to the alteration in the peripheral and the central pain processing mechanism. That is to say, it's a stress-bearing joint of the body. Sometimes the temporal multiple joint is going to be effective. In addition, the other joint in knee, hip, spine, as we are going to see. Osteoarthritis can affect the other joint inside the body, while the EMJ osteoarthritis affected the cartilage, the subchondral bone, the synovial membrane, any other hard or soft tissue causing change, such as impermanable. What we are going to demonstrating by the X-ray here, there will be. As I'm saying before, breakdown of the articulating cartilage. Breakdown, that is to say, the articulating cartilage, which is going to be or the fibrous cart uh, cartilaginous tissue, the disc is going to be breakdown and erosion. As a result, there will be change in the agriculture, uh, the agricultures of the bone. Sometimes living of the bone is going to be a care. Sometimes there will be degeneration of the synovial tissue. And this may result in the pain and affected the types of movement of the joint. Erosion of the bone, we could demonstrating change in the agriculture. Sometimes there will be dipping of the head of the condyle. Sometimes the morphological changes of the head of the condyle could be demonstrating by the CT scan. Hem characteristic features is going to be unilateral, associated with the degenerative changes of the jaw joint. As I said before, characterized by our breakdown of the articulating cartilage. As a result, the agricultural changes in the bone is going to be a care with a degenerative of the synovial tissue. And here the patient may attending to us may complaining from pain. Well, the function movement of the temporal multiple joint is going to be affected. As pain, and this types of pain may occur during movement. That is to say, pain occurs during the functional movement of the temporal multiple joint, during protruded, protruded, even during the lateral exclusion types of movement. The patient may have. Limitation to the movement to the opposite side, that is to say, moving from the right to the left. And here we could hear that there is a grinding noise on function. That is to say, there will be history of a clicking. 
deviation on opening to the affected side يعني كل الـ sign of symptoms here we could demonstrating in osteoarthritis sometimes unusual percentage of those types of patients are a female in addition to patients have had a micro trauma usually from the maximum voluntary contraction force or even sometimes they may complaining from a blow to the mandible if you are going to take in history we could demonstrating those types of patients have a micro trauma paroxysm or clinching for no period of time in addition sometimes May, they may have a maximum voluntary contraction forces or sometimes they have been exposed to blow to the mandible which is considered to be the most sign of symptoms of patient with osteoarthritis and how the osteoarthritis is going to be representing to me نكتفي وأعيد بصورة مختصرة تكلمنا في هذا اليوم regarding the most important aspect of the temporomandible joint and in order to understand this amazing joint we have to understand the basic principles of the anatomy how the joint is going to be articulating, what is the function of the articulating disc, how it is going to be representing as an important during any temporal mandible joint abnormality. Anatomy. On the types of movement, whether shown say rotation, shown say translation types of movement of the temporal mandible joint. بعد أن فهمنا المبادئ الرئيسية فيما تخص الأناتومي فيما يخص الموفمنت تكلمنا على الانترنال دي ارينجمنت اوف ذا تيمبرال مانديبل جوينت كيف تكون حركة الارتيكوليتنج ديسك وذ ريداكشن وذاوت ريداكشن اند سو اون وذ بوستيريال ديسك ديسبليسمنت وتكلمنا انه هناك خصائص بالساين والسيمتومز اللي ممكن بيض التيمبرال مانديبل جوينت يأتيني بالانترنال دي ارينجمنت كيف ممكن ان ياتيني في كل حاله اللي ذكرتها with reduction without reduction with intermediate locking and so on شلون يميز طبيب الاسنان as a primitive نكرر مره اخرى we cannot cover all the expect of this amazing joint but in this lecture and the second lecture we are going to give you a basic principles regarding this the basic knowledge of information in order to understand this joint as simple as we could but as a general talking there is a lot a lot of information regarding this subject please if you need any things to be clarified please do not hesitate and ask me regarding this subject and we will be ready to answer that